You are now tuned in to the Free Play Media Podcast Network. Hey, we're <laughs> we are live. It's Chris Denman and Travis Terrell in studio today at Gaslight. Big thanks to them and uh, and and all of the hard work that's done at the studio. Media Outlaws, uh, making sure we've got this on video. So we're excited to have that. We've got a guest today. We're excited to bring him in. But I got to tell you first about Barrel Beard and Tattoo Oil, great sponsor here in St. Louis, Missouri. Handmade, great for your skin, great for your hair. We're actually going to hook up. Steve, our uh, our guest, with some of it too, nice. Travis. So I'm excited about that. So check them out. Obviously, Neovitan. Type in L I V E when you check out and get the new subscription. You'll get uh, a little bit of a discount. So today we're pleased. We've got a comic in from L A. He's been spending some time in New York, where he's from too. He's a Travis, he's an actor. <clears throat> Writer, Steve Rand is easy. What's That's up, right. Steve? Hello, good morning, afternoon, and good evening. <laughs> right. Whatever this is on, whatever time you are listening to this. <laughs> right. That's modern technology That's it, at its man. greatest. Hello, yeah. everyone at all times. We were just discussing uh, beforehand, Roseanne is coming back. Are you looking forward to doing the league in like 10 years again? I actually, my wife asked me that today. She goes, you know, you're going to start talking about that. I go, people already talk about that. It's We've only been gone for two years. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's not, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, first of all, we could... People keep continuing to ask, like, well, why can't you do the show anymore and this and that? You know, they brought back shows like Arrested. You know, they've got right. those big casts. But for us, our show, it's very, uh, you know, it's time restricted to J- July, August, September. You got to do it during football. Exactly. Right. You know, unless we're going to do a completely different show. So it's tough to get everyone together for those couple months. Do I see a possibility of like maybe like one day they do a movie or whatever where you like go to the Super Bowl or something ridiculous like that? Right. Reno 911 had a movie. Yeah. I mean, you guys can have a movie. But something th- like that. Would that uh, be something you'd want to do? I mean, I love working with those guys. Yeah. Uh, we go to dinner once in a while. We still crack each other up. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't. I would. Of course. I would. That's, that's, fa- like, that's so cool to hear because you hear some people like, eh, I don't know, time to move on or whatever. But. You're a stand-up. You have a ton of opportunity. So it's still, I think that's really a cool thing. Once you've had some success, you can still hold on to that and say, yeah, I'd go back to it. Why yeah, not? I feel like uh, it was what people mo- know me most from. So, And people, you know, we didn't have a tremendous audience numbers-wise, but the people that liked that show, I really liked they obsessed. really oh, liked absolutely. that show. It was, yeah. They were rabid fans. I mean, not I've us had too, for sure. awkward interactions <laughs> all across. No, bad, yeah. did people often come up to you oh, and like, hey, people, your fantasy advice, please give us that. That's, or? that's the best case scenario. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the you're being, the you're being very polite with what you think <laughs> you're the fans. Disneyland yeah. and someone yells, show me your pretty dick. <laughs> at Disneyland, dude? <laughs> mm. Oh, shit. Look at this. Yo, show me that pretty dick, man. <laughs> what yeah. is going on here? Right. You're like, my, and you got to explain to your kids here. why people yell that at you, and that's like okay that no one else is like running over. Going, Listen, he said the D word. Yeah, we wouldn't be here if they uh, weren't allowed to Guess show. Guess what? That. They wouldn't have a. We wouldn't have a guided tour through Disneyland. If <laughs> right. they you know, You're the guided tour dead. family. Okay. Did you ever think? You'd excuse, be me. Be- excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. He's on FX. I didn't know. Excuse if you knew me. That. FXX. Yeah. Excuse me. Basic, basic cable. Yeah, Excuse me. exactly. Did you ever envision like the premise of the league? Did you ever think, how can we make multiple seasons out of this? Because I would imagine when first people were like, so it's a show around, centered around fantasy football. No, how here's what you- I was told. I had done several network pilots up until that point, and they were, some of them were, I got, some of them got picked up, some of them got canceled, some of them didn't even make it past the pilot. Right. So I didn't know what the, the the equation was how do you make a successful television i didn't know what it was some right. of them were like oh this one's pretty funny but no oh nobody watched it oh this one's really funny but the network's not picking it you right. know or it doesn't fit whatever demographic they need so i didn't know what we were doing i'd done this movie i did uh mall cop uh-huh. and the people that cast that Jeannie mccarthy <laughs> she's like hey what at the rap party she's like we have this other uh we have the show i'm casting and it's fantasy football it's about fantasy football She's like, it's like, I don't want to say, it's guys like Entourage, but not like Entourage. It's Chicago. 
They okay. play fantasy football. That's their jam. And it's improvised. That's why I thought of you. She's like, they're going to kind of work off of a, off of a, a like a, you know, an outline. Not yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I go, all right. All right. So then this was like right around Christmas time. And then January, February came, March came. Didn't hear anything else. What do pilot season? Did a pilot? Didn't get picked up. It was shitty. And then uh, June, uh, no, right? May comes and Jeannie calls. She goes, that shows they're going to start casting it soon. They wrote it. They're going to ready to come in tomorrow. So I went and I read for Pete. This role, Pete. Okay. And I didn't read because there was no read. They had a, an improviser, sort of like a person with the casting director and the creators. Sure. I was going to go back and forth with you. So I did Pete. Me, him and I, I did Pete and this and that and talking, you know, we did a little scene back and forth. It was funny. And then I went out to the car and Jeannie called me. She's like, they want you to come back tomorrow, if you can, to do Kevin. I go, all right. They go, they, they, they might already have a Pete. Something's going on with Pete. So I go, all right. So I go and I do Kevin the next day. Great, did fine, left. And then I was going to New York for the summer because I just had my son. I wanted to go hang out with my family. My wife and I were going to New York. I'm like, I'm going to New York. My agent calls. I go, you have to, can you read tomorrow? They want to do a chemistry read with this girl that's going to possibly play the Jenny role. Could you go in tomorrow? I go, I'm going to the airport <laughs> at four. They go, they want you there at like two. Can you go there and then go straight to the airport? I go, no problem. I go there. My wife's driving around the block. I'm inside oh, doing wow. it, doing it. And I get off. By the time I got to the airport, they called and they were like, "They want you to play." Kevin. Huge. That's awesome. Absolutely. And I was like, I don't know. I don't. All right, maybe I don't know. Because I had this <laughs> other movie go, called Going the Distance that they really wanted me for. Though they yeah. were thinking about it, and they were really, they were, they wanted Jason Sudeikis, but they probably weren't going to get him. So they were had me as a choice. My manager reps Sudeikis and me. Right. So. Yeah. I have the good, I'm like, I, and then he's like, I don't think this is going to work out for Jason. And it's like, I, I'm not, not that I'm not shifting. I just think schedule wise, he goes, I think you're going to get, it goes, do you, so then basically we had to talk, like, do you want to be a film actor or a TV actor? You could do both. But at sure. this point, it's like, if you're going to start on a pad, I'm like, I'm right. doing this fucking movie. I'm yeah, doing this movie. Absolutely. If it was for Jason, so I should know right now, all my instincts are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> horrible. Because I don't know if you've ever seen Going the Distance, <laughs> Drew Barrymore, I Justin Long, and Jason Sudeikis. I haven't it's not caught great. that. Yeah, I don't think Justin Long's in it. Just, I may have just, I may have just blasphemed Justin Long. But anyway, they sure. were like, "Hey, this TV show, they, you got to tell them today." Like I, I, I like dragged my feet for a couple of days ago. They're gonna pull it and they're gonna give it to Jerry O'Connell. If you Jerry know O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell. And my this has been his trip to a for seven years. It's yeah. been like the like, hey, if you don't, if you fuck this scene up. He's coming at you. We, he's, he's, no, he's, he's on your heels. Jerry O'Connor. Jerry's Jerry on the O'Connor. show, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, he absolutely. played the priest and stuff. We play basketball here. Uh, but uh, worst people that could be on your heels, Jerry O'Connor. Jerry O'Connor, handsome good looking, guy, charming dude. Yeah, absolutely. easily could play Kevin. <laughs> so then I was like, all right. I he would have. Like, I'm like, you know what? This thing's picked up for. Uh, we're gonna shoot a pilot. Who knows? I'm like, you know what? Let's just do it. So I said, I'm, this shit, I'm, I, I was a fan of Nick Roll, not from any re- just because we had seen each other at every audition right. for sitcoms for the previous two years before that. So just, wait, he was funny in the waiting room. So right. it's like, if he's funny right. in the waiting room, I don't mind. I, I, that's like the worst place, the hardest place to be funny, the shittiest place you try to be funny. Just sit in the waiting room, look at your lines, small talk, that's it. Don't try to be funny. He was always funny in the waiting room. He could do it, so I was like, I'm, I, I would enjoy hanging out with that guy. And Katie was wonderful. We read together, and it was, basically, what happened was they wanted Mark Duplass and Katie to play Kevin and Jenny. I think that yeah. they hadn't uh, the creators had in their mind, and they had just done some stuff together like that. So I don't think they wanted to do that again in real life. So you know, he was like, "What about Pete?" And maybe find someone else. So that's how I got into it. That's fantastic. And then you brought up Katie as well. You both were on the new season of Curb. Yeah, back which is episode. which is so cool. How? Did, what's the business of that? Similar management production company, or is it just? Oh, you're talking. About, oh, uh, uh, for the, Curb. It's, yeah, for Curb, like same far, writer, director, everything. The guy Jeff Schaefer that did the League. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, wrote on Seinfeld for sure. you know a couple of years, and then started Curb with Larry when he wanted to do Curb. They kind of, you know, got together and started coming up with premises from season one on. Yeah. So he was executive producer. And then, uh, so he was, you know, he did that for six years. And then he realized, it was like, well, this is going to be a finite time in my life, like right. four months. But I've got all these other ideas that I want to do. So he started, him and his wife, creating the league. And that's sort of, and then they never really thought that, you know, they, they thought the curb was going to be done, so he didn't know he was going to have to do bad. So sometimes we would do like a season in the league, and then he would go jump and do a season of curb. And then we thought it was just done after season eight. Right. So like four or five years between season eight and nine. 
So then I was like, oh, man, I'm never going to get to be on Curb. Like, my goal was like, as a comedian, like Christopher Guest movie, right. Curb Your Enthusiasm, <laughs> Saturday Great Night goals. Live, you can do it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, yeah. And so I was like, when I got this year, when I was like, they're bringing it back, I go, I don't know if there's anything, but if there is, hopefully they'll, they'll look at me. And then Jeff called me up. He's like, look, there's an episode. There's a cop and a chef. He goes, I'm directing it. You got, you, everybody's reading. He goes, everyone got to come in and read with Larry. He's like, it's not going to be, you know, like a long drawn out. You just going to read with Larry. Right. I go, all right. He goes, he, just, he wants to know that everyone can do it. I go, all right, no problem. But this is who, how I was used to working. Right. So I wasn't, I was comfortable and like. You know the playbook a little bit. Yeah, you're you know. a chef. There's a disturbance in the kitchen. Larry wants to know what it is. Right. Do you want to tell him? And if not, how <laughs> how strongly do you want to stay to your convictions? And right. that was it. That's all I needed. And then, you know, yelling at him is like being, like everyone's done it. It's like fantasy camp. You know, it, you're like, right. oh, yeah. I get to do it for real now. Right. Yeah, you get to hit a ground at Ozzy Smith, Roger Travis. Clemens right. or something. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then, uh, so I went in and I read with him. I read Cop and I read, uh, and I read The Chef. And then the next day, Jeff's like, yeah, they, dude, you're going to play The Chef. It's, it's hilarious. Larry loved you. And then we shot for three days. And it was amazing. Just following Larry around like a puppy dog. Not really. You gotta leave him alone. He is (laughs) very like um he is personable. He does want to hang. Of course. He does have uh he's you know, he's but he is himself at all. He's a busy seventy year old man. Like right? Yeah, he's sort and not busy in the same sense. Okay. Extremely busy to not be busy. (laughs) Like (laughs) wants to run, run, run to be able to sit down and do nothing. Uh but you know, like he eight hour days. He wants to work, but right. really, you no. Know, those sitcoms can. They're usually like, we did the league in like we did the thirteen hour days every single day, just to we get sh- it done. And we and did it in like four it. months. I yeah. Imagine what everyone's schedule. Yeah, they, and- HBO. They had all the money in the world. Right. Larry's not driving more than like ten miles from his house, so right. Right. he's on the west side, <laughs> right by the water. So it's a uh, you know it's a schlep for everybody else to get out there. But you know he they could talk him into nine. But he want the reason he has people in is because he wants to make sure when he gets there that no one's wasting time. You know. Right. We're not right. like, oh, can this guy really do it? You know, right. who well, cares that, if it's if we got you know someone on the show that they you know a big star if they can't improvise or they don't know how to do it, you don't have to necessarily improvise, but you have to know how to work within the system. Like right. Timothy Oliphant was on the league one time, yeah, uh-huh. and he played the white sushi chef. Yes, <laughs> we were like, this is amazing. It's a very funny character. Yes, what is he going to do with it, right? And then Nick Crow and I are in the scene, and he Jeff tells us Timothy's not going to improvise. Okay, but he wants to. Re- he, we beat it out like a, somewhat of a script, like more of like he just wanted to know when we were going to come in and what he was going to say every t- single time. He wasn't going to change what he said. But I'll tell you right now, that dude did. F- we probably did ten takes. He did ten different versions, all hilarious, completely <laughs> different. Just use the same words. Right. And I was like, I turned to Nick at one point. I'm like, oh, he's acting like this, this is an actor like there's a big difference like we're buffoons he's we're clowns <laughs> we're monkeys right. like oh look at that monkey just threw that other poop at that other monkey yeah, that's what yeah. the monkeys do yeah. it's still funny like this right. guy is like nuancing poop throwing yes. in a different yeah. way and so that all you have to have is a spirit of being able to do that to be able to be successful how, how do you know like how do you know that a scene is working or a joke is working in such an improv setting especially with people who may not be as familiar with it like how do you know that you're hitting so when you were doing Curb, how did you know that that was going to work for everyone in the room? When worked you, for Larry. You, you break people up. Okay. I mean, when you when the when the train gets off the tracks and you can't get it back on, it's a like no one did it to me worse ever than Jason Manzukis on the league uh-huh. as Ra, as Rafi because right. not only interesting, yeah, he's a brilliant improviser, a, a, a super sweet dude, complete opposite of who Rafi right, is right, on the right. inside. That's a horrible but person. But also has a wicked sense of humor, is incredibly intelligent, and is probably the fastest, one of the fastest improvisers ever. Wow. And he has this character. And when you give a guy like that a character with absolutely no limitations and no boundaries, right. and, and nothing that he could ever say is wrong or inappropriate and to him, right. Right. And, he, and then have the ability to be smart enough to defend it in every cause, right. the decision, it's a it's a really deadly combination. So he uh, he would break us constantly. So we knew it was funny in the moment, and then you just when you see it start to be like, oh, well, they'll they'll mess it up, but then you realize Jeff knows what he's doing, right? Because right. he's done so much television, he knows how to cut it together, where to let the air out in jokes, where to suck shit in, where so, the audience is. Yeah, the editor, it the, most, the editors yeah. are the real people right. on the show that make 
truly that we make the jokes they make them funnier and make more sense yeah for all the you hear and i guess with time constraints and budgets it would be something but just always shoot fat is what you hear right so yeah well we shoot di digital so it's like yeah. there's no there's no like oh we're running we're wasting right, we're money it's just like right. just the shoot, tapes on the floor just air we're wasting the cloud you know right. and then people's shoulders and spines from holding up <laughs> well that but they're cameras not, and shit, they're not you know? the stars that's how you also know when you've when the joke's gone too far <laughs> when the camera guys are like like when you're only cracking yourself up and they're done with it, you know? And that's another thing. Go back to your other question. Like yeah. you could tell if something was really funny when you could, because we have so many outtakes of this. Yeah. When the camera guy starts to start laugh because that's the other chocolate. thing. Matt, I know it's coming. These guys are lay people who right, aren't right. like comedians <laughs> and they're just holding a can they keep, and they start to, because like what Jason just said, like, what were you listening to? He's like, you know, like whatever ridiculous thing he was listening to and the camera guy starts to like hold it in, but you could see the camera just going up and down. Oh, that's fantastic. And Can you got to think too. You, I mean, you're saying they're they're not comics, but right. for a regular person, a camera person who's worked on a couple comedies, it's gonna have, they're gonna be a little tougher to crack yeah. than maybe just somebody in a and in probably a, have their own hashtag Me Too story as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would think so, man. <laughs> Is that I, I I find that's a good transition because I thought. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Seth There's Nothing Myers. good about that. Well, I Travis. thought as far yeah. as... That's well, embarrassing right, for but you. But Seth Myers... As far as transitions go, right. yeah. <laughs> that was that not was a great one. Really bad. Yeah, that was rough. Man. That was the but, Chaz yeah. Bono of transitions. Yeah. Yeah. Real <laughs> early on. I got a story. Is that... what? Where are they in that transition? <laughs> Which way are they going? Anyway. No, but I thought... Uh, I, one of the challenges I thought, especially with award season coming around, I was wondering... How these comedians, how these hosts were yeah. going to be able to navigate those waters, and I thought Seth Meyers at the Golden Globes did a pretty damn decent job as yeah. far as you doing stand up, and obviously that being the the topic of the moment. Is it when you see a guy like Seth, or you see other comedians try to navigate? What what are you guys trying to do? Do you purposely avoid it? Do you say maybe I can make a joke out of this? I, I guess in your craft, I feel like you can't necessarily avoid the elephant in the room, but it's also very difficult to especially when you're traveling. I would imagine yeah. it, one joke may work well in L.A. about Me Too movement mm -hmm. may not work that well no, in the Midwest. nothing works well in L.A. about right. Me Too movement. <laughs> I would no. Have, no. LA, no. How York. dare you? No, yeah, yeah. 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 Goodness. Yeah, that's why I got to get on the road to start. I, here's <laughs> you how can't I, even want to work out your Me Too material. Yeah, yeah, I want to work Thank out my God Me Too you're stuff in St. Louis. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to St. Louis. No, but here's it. For me, I'm not a, I'm not a, I talk about my own personal experiences. Number one, I find that the most authentic because it's really, it's not like I'm caught, I could ever get charged of plagiarism or anything. stuff. like, this is what happened to me. This is right. my kids. This is what they say. Then you write the jokes within the context of what you want to talk about. But for me, I'm like, the president stuff, I'm like, oh, God, there's so many people talking about it. It's, and that's a good thing. I enjoy. There are people that I enjoy. But just I don't know if my crowd wants to come and listen to even five minutes of it. So right. if I'm not going to write what I consider a brilliant idea or, or then I, it's just I'm not topical enough right, to do right. it every day. But this stuff, the Me Too stuff, the way I look at it is like how can I'm, I, I say to myself, well, I don't know if I necessarily want to just take it on head, head on. But how can I talk about it in my own context? And I think about, well, I have sons. So now I say to myself, I have to raise them to in this in this day and age to make sure that they are protected of right. themselves and other people. Right. So that's how I personalize it. So I'll talk about it in the context of like, you know, when I first heard it, I'm like, oh, great. How am I going to raise my sons to hit on a girl now? You know, right. it's like, how are they going right. to talk to a girl? And then I thought about it, I'm like, my dad didn't teach me how to hit on a girl. Right. My dad wasn't the guy that taught. I stumbled around, you know, like. Sure. Any guy that tells you he wants, like, he's going to say, oh, I taught my son how to hit on a girl. Right. Probably told them, like, <laughs> just go up and grab him by the pussy. Yeah. You know, like, whatever. Right. Yeah. Like, something as terrible as yeah, that. Yeah, like a pickup artist as a dad. Exactly. Like, yeah, he's like, put this fedora so on. So all you need is that there. little in. You're like, all right, well, then that, and then that, I can kind of do that. And But then right. I also want to talk about, like, well, what happens to the get naked at the party guy? Like, cause that was me in college. Like the guy that, that just we came had a guy out naked, inappropriate. naked Joey. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, so does this guy? Does he go away? Is this guy like now shunned? Because right. now that's you know not what I'm saying. Like, like that, that could be. That's a real risky move. <laughs> we had a guy <laughs> that fell down, toes to uh, to no like down a flight of stairs, full on naked, like two or three times. Rug burns all over his face. He would get naked at every party. And that would probably be the funniest thing ever. But it was one girl yeah. in the back who turned in the middle of a conversation yeah. and saw the head of his penis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now could never, mm -hmm. she can't go to work anymore. Nope. Uh -huh. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Or whatever it is. <laughs> right. I'm not trying to, oh, you know, again, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not trying to trivialize <laughs> yeah. anything. Right. But I'm just saying, 
and the context of who this guy is and what makes him funny to him. Maybe, you know, You're, as a person who was... The guy who pumped gas naked. <laughs> you're worried you're gonna, your numbers are going to get wiped like a steroid user, yes, right? Yes, we're going to yes. go away. No, the yeah. This is it. It's numbers. the end of a, of, a, of a species. Of a storied career. And you know what? Maybe it's time for us to leave. <laughs> I don't know. But that's So you ask how you get into it. I just go, all right, I got to make this as per. Let's do it like that, yeah. You know, I, because I trust me, I've got thoughts and jokes beyond that, and I've Tried them out on my wife and stuff, and they don't. They don't. She does not like them. Frown. And I know that they would work well, but it's going to take a lot. So I, I don't know. I mean, I may get them in there at some point, but just how you how I tackle it from the very beginning right. is trying to make it like how does it affect me personally? Does she ever chime in and go? I, I as a typical man, you know, how does this affect me <laughs> personally? I got to raise two kids to not be wolves. And I got to make sure that my generation of getting naked at the party guy. It's preserved, okay. it's preserved, right. protected. Yeah. Does that, does your, does your, do your kids understand now? Like, hey, dad's a stand-up comic, or dad does comedy, or dad's an actor. Do they get it yet, or they're um, still too young to yeah, understand they, they, what the hell is going on? Yeah, they've been to shows and they've been oh, on really? stage and stuff. Yeah, you know, they kind of when they go on the road. Sometimes I'll bring the family. Like, we're going skiing next month. We're going to Salt Lake. So, and you know, I won't bring them to shows that night. But they've been on stage. They know, right. like, we're in a hotel and people come to see dad to do stand-up and. You know, when we're at Disneyland or whatever, the people stop and take pictures. They don't. It doesn't affect. They don't know. Like, hey, what's that all about? And okay. Although, <laughs> I have a podcast and I record my intro. I do interviews and stuff, but then I record my intro. It's like drop, drop the podcast. Oh what, yeah, what, yeah. Uh, it's called Hear Me This Book. Yeah. Where I have guests. I'm not well read. I don't know if you could tell that by this interview. I'm not a well read person. <laughs> yeah. And so I have people. I was going to ask you about that next. Guests, I wasn't sure if you're comfortable with it. People, yeah. you know. Tell me about your favorite book. Why should I have read it? Give me a little like cliff note version of it. Okay. And it's just sort like of that. jumping off. Why that book? You know, like what, what's, you know, when did you, you know, so it's a conversation, not yeah. just, you know, it's an interview wrapped around this sort of uh, uh, book. But my do I do my intros at a different time. And so my son, my youngest loves it. Loves, loves, loves. So he loves talking to the microphone. <laughs> he likes to, you know, uh, st- uh, you know, just hijack the conversation He's he's a he's about that life. That's great, man. Yeah, that's got to be nice to see too, man. That's oh, that's fantastic. It is yeah. and terrifying, right? <laughs> You're thinking, yeah. Listen, you need to go naked through a couple parties to get the life yeah. experience, yeah, and I don't know I, if that's going to be okay. I don't know for if this you. is a thing that's going to be op- an option available to you, right? That's you know, ooh, that's not something you want to deal this, with. Uh, I'm excited. We were talking about. That. I'm excited to see Kimmel with at the Oscars again. I thought he yeah. killed it last year. But you're saying with the climate, all the stuff, he tends to. He's a he's a heartfelt guy, and I think he. But he, I also think he's he's real sharp. He's funny. I mean, he's, I I saw Ricky Gervais on Colbert last night uh-huh. on the plane, and they were talking about. He's like, you know, you hosted four times. Would you have? He's like, I was I was envious of Seth. I would have liked to have hosted. I think the tone would have been different. Because, I would imagine it would have been. Yeah, I think he would <laughs> yeah. have been a little harsher and a and a little less attentive to the actual women and the and the. In the movement, I thought Seth did a good job. Between, you know, I, I love this joke about you know, like uh, I, the other hosts are looking at me like the first dog in space. Like Spotnik, you know? <laughs> so, good. you know, you acknowledge that, but then he did have some some jokes that he, and people still like. Even his Harvey Weinstein stuff, like people groaned that. It's like, come on. <laughs> and then he, you know, he did shift the conversation to to you know what the movement is about and sort of making making a stamp on. Uh, you know what it meant to him, what it means to his wife, preparing for this, who he talked to, the women that he talked to. So there was a good, you know, I don't think you get any of that with Ricky Gervais or right. any of that other stuff. Or not, not saying if one is better than the other, but yeah. yeah, I think he overall was that. I'm trying to think of that. That's the most hostiest host, I know, or I, the Oscars are probably. You got to do that upfront one, right, right. But then you can just kind of snark in the middle of right. like, what's going on. I, I just, uh, do do other comedians. Like I, when I see, like when I do see Kimmel, like take on that role, and I, I feel like that's, um, that's the job. Like you have to be a specialist. But do other comedians look at hosting gigs and go, oh yeah, I can do that pretty easily? I just feel like I don't, uh, I'm not I, saying there's a specific person, but I feel like that's a, that's a very there are dudes. Job. I'm sure there are there are comedians that are like that is you got to look at it risk reward, okay? right? You right, know, so right. to me, I'm like the risk is does not. The reward is not, you know. Exactly. That's how I would see it. Yeah. First of all, if you announced that I was hosting the Oscars next year, <laughs> everyone would be like, what? How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> 
who is everyone de- like is everyone dead <laughs> right yes you know it, this so is calling you up the get guy beyond from, that yeah. <laughs> then the expectations would be really low for america <laughs> right and extraordinarily high for all the you know the tastemakers because like how did it get what, what has he shown this guy what sort of not ability, available? Yeah, like, has he shown on? to you know capture i don't know so it's you know you I, consider I, yourself a single a pitcher and it's game seven of the world series not necessarily that i think i would go out there and do fine but it's not something that i, I it would you know i'm not i don't know if that's my i'm gonna say thing. that's a because you're not playing to are you are you playing to the room or are you playing to the TV? I've hosted some like a, like a, like sports award shows. I was going to say like, like right? that. That's okay when right. you can, yeah. But the, in this environment, yeah. in this sort of, I, I don't know, you know, like it's I don't have the the clout to be let's, able to make right. those. Let's jokes get you on a couple uh, red carpets for E. We'll we'll work you out a little bit. We'll those see if you terrible. can get there, man. Those look horrible. terrible. They My look wife. Awesome. But they have to be a nice paycheck, right? For somebody trying to get some exposure. It's one. Yeah, I mean. I, I'm sure, but uh, if, if that's what you want to do, like right. Brendan Schaub did it this year, I was good. I was did literally a great job. that was my example. You know, I mean, like of, not yeah. not my jam, but Brendan's a, he likes to talk to people. He's and insane. Like, yeah, he's you know, that guy. not just like people that he cho- like. I like to talk to people that I choose to talk to. Right. <laughs> I don't want to talk forced to in this situation randos. here today. Oh, right. you know, like yeah. randos oh, about got, what they wore. Got weird and awkward. Yeah, yeah. that's why like you guys. I'm talking no, about like Steve, some it's cool, actress man. It's that great. I am I'm obligated to interview because she's wearing a black dress. Yeah, yeah I see that's on your shoulder. What do you? Have? But Brendan's into fashion, and in a, he says yeah. he is. And he, I don't know. He'd be into that, like award show fashion. I don't know. But that, but you know what? That might be him. You know, like paying his dues or whatever true yeah we're gonna, um, what do you think about his to, to brought up he's coming to helium he's gonna do what f- three shows here do you guys yeah, he ever get you ever when you see a guy like shop jump into the ring if you will and, and what is he oh stand he, up you mean or yeah, jumping to the stand up yeah, yeah, i find it to be super impressive in the but it, it, i've also not seen his stand up too but i mean i've seen I, 15 minutes i haven't seen it in an hour i've seen right. like 15 yeah. minute spots at the store and stuff yeah he, you know he's not he's not up there trying to tell you that like this is who i am now Right, like, right. What, okay. You know, like a butterfly coming out of a cocoon. I'm now like Richard Pryor. He's like, I'm figuring this shit out. <laughs> yeah. And I obviously have much more of a platform and an audience than most people that start out do. But you know, he's a he's a like I said, he's a people person. He's a good dude who likes to talk to people. He's funny. Right. You work know? ethic of a professional athlete. Exactly. Yeah. So he's going to work, put in the in the hours and the effort and the. You know, he's and he's not standing up there trying to be like, well, um, you know, I'm just as I'm Joe, there's Joe Rogan and everyone else that's here, all my peers, you know, like Bill Burr <laughs> right, and all right, the people. Right, right. Right. I'm on the lineup with all them, and we are peers and we are equals. And you know, like, it's not. I don't think he has that. I'll sort beat of, your ass yeah. if you think otherwise. Exactly. You know, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so I, I know, oh, sorry, okay. go ahead. I was going to say, I know. I'm looking at your hat, and I know that fan base has been long suffering and of course after last year you guys were able to make a good Are you run talking about the Yankees? I'm talking about the Yankees and how they somehow uh, somehow convince Giancarlo Stanton you damn done it again yeah. you're, you're do, back to the empire man who do you who do the Derek Yankees Jeter think they is what are? we did here's our <laughs> saint that went over. okay oh, that, that's going to be a sub question we're going to set you up for life go over there you buy that team <laughs> and give us Giancarlo Stanton <laughs> for nothing i don't even think we i don't even i think we increased our payroll by like 4 or 5 million dollars this year you uh, and we did a second stat you, Jeter you, another statue what i'm of that shocked move? about there's a damn no one in like no one no of the big Prospect because we had a good, good uh, um, farm system. Yeah, yeah. Clint Frazier's coming huge out of the other yeah. ones got got moved either. No, 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 and it's none of them. It's not fair. And it's a it's, it's a fair, wild, man. wild. When thing. I saw him going after you, Darvish, and then like, like I was like, oh, they still have that money. <laughs> they you still may- have like like <laughs> like start like game one starter Steve, get money. Yeah. Steve, it is a real possibility the Yankees sign. Mike Musak has to hit eighth in their lineup, and he'll hit forty home runs. Yeah, that's a real possibility. They were talking. They're still going after what's his name on the Orioles, Machado. They're and saying Machado and could Harper. Could you imagine? There's I, a crazy. Can you imagine if, if Harper Har- signed on the off? I mean, could you imagine Giancarlo, Stanton, Look, Aaron Judge, wipe that and smile Bryce off Harper? Your face. <laughs> I know. Wipe that, that smile. Was, off and that face. was the funny thing because oh we were watching. God. And it's actually cool to see the Yankees back in the playoffs. We were like, "Oh, that's great." The Yankees, yeah, are Matt back. Holiday coming up. Yeah, they're gritty. And Here we then, go. Like the off season happened, well, and everyone it's went, just oh, a freak back show because Empire. they can do this because Aaron yeah. Judge makes probably less money than right. you know he makes like seven hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Gary Sanchez makes like a million too. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know. So that. 
it's not going to be like this in five years from now when they got to pay those guys. Yeah, but if you have three rings out of that, that's not a bad shake. Yeah, man. Yeah. Either way. And man, trust me, man. they'll be the, the last three years will be the A-Rod years of Giancarlo Stanton's <laughs> contract where we're paying him $38 million a year to watch he's getting 100 at-bats. And he's just slaying all yeah, the... Yeah, he's uh, lipping out there like, yeah. like O.J. Simpson trying to walk out. Just, you know, like slow... Oh my gosh! So I don't want to keep. We don't want to keep you here super long, but I, I am. It's curious. already past that. Point. Yeah, we're kind of pull, we're pulling it out. <laughs> Thirty minutes ago. Who's Kidding. the most talented person you've worked with? Or give us some of the. Uh, I mean, it could I be am. obvious. Obviously, Clearly. right? No, you, you hold um, the mirror up. Yeah, I don't know who the most talented person I have worked with is, but the uh, the people on the the league was amazing, and yeah. those guys. I don't know if I'll ever have an experience of laughing as much as I did off. You know, onset, offset, right? The entire time. Are your stand-up crowds expecting to see the guy from the league, or is it some half of them and do? Half? Yeah. I mean, I, I've been doing it a long time now. I've been in enough places where I think people realize that you know, I'm I am not that exact person, right. but I'm not that different than no, that guy. No. It's not like I'm uh, a stand-up like where I'm going to come out like with puppets and stuff like that. You're like, where, where, where is this coming from? I'm going to draw the entire hour. <laughs> Do you remember our buddy? Yeah, Jeff, okay, yeah. Are, yeah. are you familiar with puppets uh, on the lead? Why? I'm trying to think. Jonathan Kite was on. Uh, are you familiar with him? He's a no. stand-up. He was on a CBS show where he had to talk like he was like Russian or something. Exactly. So he's a guy girls. from Chicago. That's the thing, though. And right. they're yeah. like, whoa, we thought you were. And he's like, I'm a dude from Chicago. Like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the thing. It's like, if you were... Uh, if you were, if I was like on a, some CBS drama like NCIS Louisiana, but I still did stand up, people would have right. really no expectations of right. what it is, you know, yeah. what I am. But because <laughs> the league is the league, and people are so rabid, they want you like they expect like they they you want should be Kevin hanging out yeah, on stage or something coming right? out there sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So there is a bit of a I have to kind of let them know that you know it, it, I, it's just a show. Right. It's all make believe, as I tell him. Like, it's all make a believe. Oh gosh, thank you so much for coming by, man. Go see really Steve problem. at Helium all weekend long. I think uh, I want to say Ryan Dalton's opening. So, and you've got a feature. And uh, Jason Who's Tebow your from Punch Drunk Sports came out. Oh, nice. Cool with me this weekend. Oh, so. nice. That should be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a blast. It'll be a blast. Go see Steve and everybody this weekend. Download the podcast. What's the podcast? One more time. Oh, hear me this book. Hear me Steve this book. Easy. I'm gonna check that out, man. That's yeah. awesome. You on a network or anything? You just put it up. Uh, all Things Comedy Network. Oh, oh nice. very cool. Bill Burr. Yeah, Lancer. and then yeah. Uh, and so yeah, but you can get it wherever you get podcasts. Wherever you're listening to this, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Spotify, iTunes, all those great places. So, Steve, thanks a ton. Thanks, man. Man. Really appreciate it. Man. Thank you.